Europe and the United States are still probably a year away from licensing gene therapy for cancer, but there is one country in the world where you can already receive treatment, China. After the scandal in which a South Korean scientist was found to have faked his stem cell research, doubts were cast on Asian scientific projects. But as our China correspondent Lizzie Hilsom now reports, hundreds of Westerners suffering from cancer are now heading for Beijing to receive the most revolutionary advanced medical treatment in the world. Desperation brought Richard Weisenborn to the Haidian Hospital in Beijing. Six months ago I was dying, no hope. I had two cycles of that treatment and had a checkup and my tumors were gone. If you look at me now, you have no idea how I looked when I came here. I was spitting up blood. Swollen, everything was swollen, and I was in pain. After his tongue cancer spread to his lymph nodes, the doctors at home in Texas had given him two months to live. But here he had a chance, because China is the first country to license gene therapy. I started two more treatments, two more cycles of treatments, and uh, Last Friday, I got the results from a PET scan, and right now I'm totally cancer-free. A company called Subiono, based in Shenzhen in southern China, is manufacturing the drug Richard received. Similar treatments are still undergoing clinical trials in the U.S. and Europe, but the Chinese licensed the drug Gendocene in 2003. It works by reactivating the P53 gene, which acts as a tumor suppressor. The P53 gene present in healthy cells has been switched off by cancer. Gendocene is injected directly into the tumor. It uses a virus as a medium to carry the P53 gene back into the cancerous cell. It reactivates the P53, causing the cancerous cells to commit suicide and the tumor to shrink. Science is the first, uh, Dr. Peng Zhaohui uh, returned from the University of California to found Subiono. He's been criticized for going too fast and not including enough patients in his clinical trial. In America, trials were put on hold for three years after a patient died. When Gendocene was approved in 2003, we'd only had just over 100 cases, and it wasn't a very long observation period before that. It was licensed based on short-term effectiveness, but today we've had more than 4,500 cases and have followed up our patients for six years. So far, results have been good. At the number two municipal hospital in Shenzhen, Lue Zhang Lian is being prepared for his eighth dose of gendocene to treat late-stage lung cancer. Gene therapy is used in conjunction with other treatments, in his case, chemotherapy. The doctors check the process on the scan. It's apparently uncomfortable but not painful. Back in the ward, his wife is on hand to help him cope. But the side effects of gene therapy appear less acute than the alternatives. The side effects of chemotherapy are terrible, but after each gendocene treatment, I just develop a fever the same evening and recover the next morning. I feel fine, and it seems that the symptoms of cancer are disappearing. I eat and sleep like a normal person now, as if I wasn't ill. The doctor shows me an x-ray from a woman whose cancer had caused fluid to accumulate on her lungs. After gendocene treatment, the tumor shrank and the fluid was reduced. Many doctors in Europe and the USA see gene therapy as the most promising new development in cancer treatment. But despite having more resources and more experience in drug research, they're now lagging behind China. This isn't an ultra-modern high-tech facility. It's an ordinary Chinese hospital. Yet cancer patients here can get this revolutionary gene therapy that's not available anywhere else in the world. It's exactly the kind of project that the Chinese government is trying to promote because they say they want in 15 years' time for the Chinese economy not to be based on manufacturing but on science and innovation.
Lab technicians check this batch for impurities. A mistake could be disastrous for gene therapy research across the world. China has a competitive advantage. Scientists are returning from abroad and development costs are relatively cheap. Sabiono is building a new factory to produce a million and a half doses of gendersene a year, backed by venture capital and government grants. In the next 20 to 30 years, China will catch up with the U.S. in technology development, especially in biotech research. China will produce many innovative projects and products. We cannot say China will surpass the U.S. in the coming decades, but it will narrow the gap. And then she caught on and got better and better. And then Before she... returning to Texas, Richard encourages others who've come to the Haidian Hospital. Philomena's here from Australia with ovarian cancer. Richard's treatment cost about 20,000 pounds. He sees no merit in the argument that China has moved ahead too quickly. In the United States, they usually take five, six years. They want all the facts, all the data. In those five, six years, I don't know if it's millions, but I would say hundreds, thousands of people die because they can't be helped, because they don't let the drug in. The Hydean has produced a video to promote its treatment. Some Western scientists may cast doubt on Chinese research, but such is the demand from Western patients, a new 50-bed international center is opening in Beijing. The doctors here say gendersene isn't a miracle cure, but by the time the West has licensed gene therapies, the Chinese will have five or more years of clinical experience and thousands of patients' lives will have been prolonged. Lindsay Hilson, Channel 4 News, Beijing.